Hello dear viewers, my name is Nino and you're watching Nino's product reviews and today we're going to take a closer look at the Samsung Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus. Now these two phones are very similar, uh, the main difference between them being the size of the display. It's something that we've seen in the past with Samsung Galaxy phones. The S8 has a 5.8 inch display while the S8 Plus sports a 6.2 inch display and the interesting thing here is that these displays are spread out in a much smaller body so they will cover the most of the front part of the phone and uh, this enables us to essentially not have huge phablets in our hands although we still have really nice big displays so we're going to take a closer look at that but first i'm going to go down with the specs we're talking about super amoled displays as always 16 million colors and i've mentioned that the difference is in size of the displays as you can see we have uh uh, 570 ppi density on the smaller one and a uh, slightly lower one i think it was 530 something in any case uh, this is not something you'll be able to do, recognize with the naked eye the slightly smaller density simply because you have a larger screen here we have corning grill glass 5 on both of these devices front and back always on display which is something really cool and we'll see it later it's essentially when you turn off the display of the phone you still have some information on it such as the clock and notifications the cool thing about that is that since we have an AMOLED display everything that is black on the display is actually inactive that means that the, these specific pixels are shut off and they don't really take any electricity from the battery so uh, this is not something that's going to cost us that much when it comes to battery life but it is going to affect the battery life and uh, combined with the other things it's going to affect it quite significantly at the end of the day but that's something we'll get to later android 7.0 nougat is on these devices and depending on where you buy them in europe or in the us you're going to find slightly different specs inside in europe you're going to find the uh, exynos 8895 octa-core processor and uh, in the us you're going to find a snapdragon 835 which is again specific only to the usa if you buy the phone in Europe, your phone is going to have a Mali G71 GPU inside, while in the US our friends are going to meet an Adreno 540. Now you have to be aware that both of these processors and GPUs are essentially top of the line. There is hardly anything faster at the market uh, in the moment at the moment, so it's not something that I would worry about. I am unsure which one of the two is essentially faster simply because I only have the European models here and I cannot judge those. But you're going to find out that you have 64 gigabytes inside, 4 gigabytes of RAM. You can insert a micro SD card which can be up to 256 gigabytes on top and you can use one uh, nano SIM card. You have to consider that our friends from Asia as always get much much better specs. They for example get the dual SIM card models and uh, usually have also hardware uh, better hardware inside now when it comes to the cameras we have a 12 megapixel camera at the back and an 8 megapixel in the front and the cameras are very similar with the ones from the past but now for example the front camera has an auto focus uh, focus in it so uh, there are a lot of interesting things I want to address here and I'm gonna go with the appearance of the phone obviously this phone is going to look very different from uh, any other previous phones of this series they have really revamped the style, they have still kept the IPX certification so this phone is dust and waterproof for up to 30 minutes uh, underwater and uh, it's just awesome in the way it feels, it feels a lot like a pebble we have on the back as you saw the fingerprint sensor on the sides, we have the volume rockers and the new Bixby button, button. at the bottom we have a, my, uh, a type C charging port and an aux port for our headphones as well as the loudspeaker and on the other side we have the power button this is exactly the same situation when it comes to the smaller phone uh, the one i'm holding right now is the bigger i believe and uh, it's essentially the same positioning of everything we have here the sim card tray and the micro sd card tray they are one and the same i am quite angry about the fact that we don't have the option between two sim cards and and one sim card a micro sd sim card uh, not sim card but uh, micro sd card Unfortunately, this is not an option here and we've seen it on Asian phones. It's something that I'm really missing and really pains me. Now when it comes to the displays, this, these phones just offer wonderful, awesome displays. But you will notice right off the, bo uh, the box that the phone is set up to 1080p by default. So you need to manually change the resolution 
if you want to actually see the newer one with the newer, you know, just make everything looks that much crisper and just use your phone at its maximum capacity. This is what you have to do. And the reason why you start with a 1080p resolution like that is simply because uh, they want to save the battery. They don't have much of a battery inside with 3000 milliampers and it's something that they just don't want you to do that much. Now also the brightness, the great thing about this phone is that the brightness is really bright and uh, I'm, sh I'm trying to show you the smaller phone is set to 1080p and it's kind of hard to tell but the, the, the high resolution to the right just looks so much better compared to the one if you really look closely at the letters. It is a bit hard to tell especially because the, on the larger phone this is going to have that much of a higher effect than on the smaller one but both displays are just stellar absolutely awesome devices in terms of uh, displays you have HDR on these displays the colors are popping as always and just the Super AMOLED display is just something that I've always loved now I decided to pull these phones under Antutu because I was very very curious usually I would do this somewhat later throughout the review but I went ahead and got on, did it pretty soon and uh, I found two very interesting things out. The first one actually isn't that interesting when you think about it. It is that uh, both phones are absolute powerhouses. There is absolutely nothing on the market that needs this much processing power except the DeX attachment that you get later. And the second thing that I found out is that um, you actually have a bit better processing power uh, when it comes to the larger phone. It always scored a bit higher. Maybe that's just in my case. And, uh, but still it was pretty cool. Now since we have a new aspect ratio here you will see that some applications like the YouTube application uh, will adapt by fitting the image which is really nice. Others won't do it so you might have border, black borders and you have to live with this but it's absolutely worth the sacrifice. You also saw a special software kind of HDR which applies to separate, several applications. It does improve colors a little bit but it is not real. Now I mentioned the DeX situation. The reason why I don't have this is because it almost costs 160 euro to get and uh, it's not something that I need. I had the chance to try it out and as soon as I just started a YouTube video, uh, a Chrome uh, browser where I was browsing a few things and a Word file because this essentially connects to a monitor, to a mouse and a keyboard and it simulates a PC. As soon as I did this I noticed that it was already having trouble, the mouse was kind of frame rate-ish and it just wasn't holding out so well. So uh, is this going to replace an actual, actual computer? Absolutely not, no chance. It just doesn't have, ironically it should be able to but it doesn't seem like it can. It doesn't have enough processing power it seems or just not optimized enough. The actual UI is very nice and uh, it, it, it looks very nice and it really feels like you're working on an actual laptop or a computer but it does not handle multitasking well and I think that a much cheaper laptop would be a much better solution for this. So that's also the reason why I didn't buy this part because I would not use it. I didn't want to have it just for the review and then have it stand here. It is a pretty expensive part. So I opted out of it. That's why you see these lame pictures for which I apologize. But you're gonna have to trust me. I was not too impressed with this. It is an awesome concept but it just doesn't work quite well yet. So it's uh, left to everyone to decide if they want to give it a try. It's definitely a very cool thing and a cool idea. But a phone is not a computer and a, well, they are very close to it, but they're not going to replace them. That's my point. Now when it comes to the camera, you're going to see a very similar camera to the one of the S7. And uh, that comes with the pluses that you know from the S7. It's extremely fast. It's extremely responsive. It autofocuses really fast. The pictures look awesome. The colors are bright. They're really, all I can do here is praise this. This is pretty much the best camera on the market. I have had the possibility to play around with a lot of the new phones and I can easily tell you that nothing beats this in my personal opinion. The coolest thing is that the front facing camera, now it also has these stupid Snapchat adjustments. I'm not someone who really values them, but some people might. But the front facing camera now also has an autofocus, something that many phones still don't have. And it's again, really fast, really snappy. It just works well in low light conditions as well as in good light conditions. As you can see from these pictures here, you will immediately be able to tell that this camera does not mess around. 
the pictures are crisp, they look awesome in every way and it really is something that people who like to take pictures will appreciate and I'm sure they'll have a lot of fun. I am not one of these people and I'm not good with the pictures. I did not set any kind of additional settings. I just took it out of the box, so to speak, of, went outside, made a few pictures. The Auto HDR really did the dirty work for me. And as you can see, this just looks great. It's really awesome and I'm absolutely impressed. I think people who like to take pictures, I'm not one of them again, but people who do like it, they're going to find that this camera is exactly what they've been looking for all along unless they have an S7 which is extremely similar. Now again the front facing camera here and again I'm actually standing in a position where light is coming towards the camera and I think the picture is very good. Here are low light conditions now this picture looks very bright but it actually is not even nearly as, as well lit as it appears. These lamps in the backs are more ambient than anything else and I think it still delivers awesome pictures just absolutely absolutely dwarfs most of the other cameras and even the best ones out there like the pixel uh, are just close to it but not quite identically as good now here we will find bluetooth 5.0 which now finally makes it possible to connect two devices simultaneously to your phone and this is something awesome i've been asked about this so many times by viewers can i do this can i do this and i always tell them no it's not possible without extra hardware which is usually expensive well, now it is you can do this. I have two Bluetooth speakers here. I will connect them to the phone and later on I'll listen to some stuff. I'm not going to show it to you. You're just going to have to take my word for it. But uh, while it warns you that uh, there might be some lag in it, there was no lag for me. Maybe it all depends on how close the speakers are to the device. And since both of them are fairly close here, I mean, if there are different distances, Bluetooth is not as fast. It might affect that. In this particular case, the sound was perfectly synchronized. I had absolutely no problems. Now, of course, we have a lot of uh, a plethora of uh, security features on this phone and they really work well. Although this is where stuff is going to go uh, a bit downhill and I'll get to that in a moment. But one of the first things is face recognition. Face recognition works awesomely. I mean, I'm standing behind the camera and I'm trying to adjust this phone to my face and it still recognizes it really fast. Without the camera in the way, it had absolutely no issue immediately recognizing it. Unfortunately, if you print out a picture of yourself and hold it in front of the phone, you'll have just the same effect. So in terms of security, this isn't exactly the best kind of security there is. But, you know, for someone, uh, for someone who doesn't want it too secure, it will be enough. Now, the iris unlock, of course, is something that is much better. And you have these funny uh, things here, which you can put where you look into. And uh, I just tried it for the video. I'm not a kind of person who would use something like that. But the iris scanner actually works really well. Although not 100% of the times I had to hear open my eyes like a crazy person. And as I did that, it really worked every time. But if I looked normally at it, sometimes it wouldn't bite as fast. It still worked well though, altogether, I'm pretty satisfied. Now when it comes to the fingerprint sensor, it's next to the camera, not underneath it. And that sucks. And other people have said that this for sure, because very often you're gonna end up touching your camera and every other kind of stuff in the back of the phone, smear it up. And that's not something you wanna do. If you look at it like I am doing from time to time, yeah, you're gonna hit it and it works really well. But if you just want to try it intuitively, so far I haven't been able to get the necessary muscle memory to be able to perform this feat every time. Now, I've mentioned earlier that we have a special button on our phone for a new application called Bixby. And Bixby is supposed to be something like Google Now and Siri. And uh, unfortunately, it sucks. Uh, I don't even know why they keep trying to introduce things that we really don't need. We already have such awesome options. But Bixby cannot be used with speech recognition yet. And uh, it, it cannot even recognize an S8. I mean, it is, an, it is a Samsung product. I'm, I'm trying to take a picture. Okay, the S8 is not so easy to recognize, but, it, but, but still, you know, come on. Then I tried to use a uh, hot sauce that I have, a very popular hot sauce here in Europe. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't do that well there anyway. Whatever I try, no matter how easy I made it for Bixby, it didn't work. It just recognized like all kinds of stuff but it didn't recognize the stuff that I actually wanted it. So, you know, it doesn't seem to work at all. It doesn't seem well. And why they would give it an extra button for itself, I don't know. The only thing I can think of is that we're gonna be downloading applications and replacing the functionality of that button. But Bixby is a failure. I took my girlfriend's Labello here and uh, thought, okay, this is something so unique. It's gotta be able to recognize it. And no, it doesn't recognize something similar, but it just fails 
no matter how easy I make it for this application. There is absolutely no reason for you to use this whatsoever. It is not good in any way. The only thing it did is actually recognize the text, which confused me even more because if you enter this text in Google, it immediately shows you this specific product. So I don't know what algorithm it uses, but it's not a good one. It's not a very useful application. It definitely does not merit an additional button. And as I mentioned, this is where I'm gonna talk about the bad things and one of them is the fingerprint magnet that is this phone. I love the phone, the way the phone feels. I love the way the phone looks, but unfortunately it does get a lot of fingerprints. It's something you're gonna have to live with. Uh, I am and uh, I, I don't think it's a big deal, but some people hate it, so I'll mention it. Yes, lots of fingerprints all over the device. You have to just learn to live with this. And uh, unfortunately, it just uh, goes down here from there. The speaker uh, at the bottom of the phone is not only bad in terms of sound quality, but it is also fairly quiet, meaning that when you carry your phone on your person, you might not hear it. And not only that, but you will also have trouble hearing it if you hold it and somehow put your hand over the speaker. Obviously, that applies to all kinds of phones, but I would just love to see expensive phones come with nice speakers like back in the day with the HTC, that's something that we haven't seen. Okay, in this particular phone, obviously you can't have front facing speakers, but at least the quality could be better. It just doesn't sound that good to me to begin with. So I'm not very happy with the speaker. And the biggest issue that I have so far is the battery life. The battery life is atrocious on these devices. And it's not something that surprises me. Let's just think about it. We had uh, note situation last year they had to recall the phone the phone essentially was declared a hazard airlines wouldn't allow you to get inside if you had this phone on you so they're scared and i understand it so they went with us playing it safe putting a small battery in here and unfortunately this battery just doesn't hold you have all these awesome features that all demand electricity they all demand charge and 3000 milliamps are not enough and i'm i'm really shocked about it but this phone does not hold one day as a matter of fact, it doesn't even hold eight hours of normal use. You can't even get a working day's worth of this phone's battery unless you want to charge it constantly or you want to charge it from time to time, at least. And that is something that is just unforgivable in my eyes. It just pains me to say it because it's such an awesome phone in many ways, but it also does come with quite a lot of weaknesses, which I don't understand at this point. This is 2017. It's such an awesome phone and I want to love it so much but the battery and, and just, you know, the several issues that we had here all stack up for me. I'm still gonna recommend it, but 800 euro or, you know, pounds or dollars, whatever it's worth, wherever you're buying it at the moment at which you're watching this video, for me it was 800 euro. And uh, I, I just, I don't know if it's worth that much. I just don't know if it's worth that much. It does bring awesome things to the table, no doubt about it. For me, I'm still unsure about it. But if you are interested in buying it, check out the links at the bottom. You can take a look on Amazon. It's an awesome phone, but it is not yet the perfect phone we're waiting for. I believe the next note is going to be that phone. So let's hold our breath and hope for the best. Thanks for watching.